Hey guys, today I'm going to talk about some Eternal Master cards that have gone up in price. Now Eternal Masters is pretty much at a all time low. So these cards like Mana Crypt, which before was unaffordable for most players at $200 or $250, are now within reach and that's the power reprints. So this is a good time. Uh, to buy these if you need them. Now, if you don't need them and you want to speculate on them, my belief is all cards in modern will eventually be reprinted into dust. So speculating on them, unless you can flip it very quickly, I mean, unless you can flip it within six months, which is, depending on how much stock you have, you know, the difficulty varies, right? So if you have 100 copies of this, really hard to flip. If you only have a play set, maybe it's worth holding on to, but you're still going to get butchered by shipping and buy listing and all those things that happen. Force of Will, uh, this Force of Will, the foil used to be insanely expensive around, I think 500 to, I, I, when it first came out, I think it was a thousand bucks or something like that. Uh, or maybe I'm thinking of the judge promo being a thousand dollars. Wow. Uh, Imagine if it was printed as an uncommon in set, right? How <laughs> inexpensive it would be. And we'll talk about Wasteland a little later. One of the critical points about Force of Will and all of Eternal Masters is if you just need a single tin of it, it's reasonable to buy at this price. If you wanted to speculate on it, it is not reasonable. You will get hosed to probably multiple times in the same, you know, same period. I'm going to go off on a little tangent right now and talk about uh, the videos that we're making and we're pretty much a MTG finance channel, but I don't believe I should be making videos about products that I do not know anything about, which would be, let's say, Pika Trade. I don't know anything about that, so I never wanted to make a video about it because even though when I did more research about it, I found out it was pretty much a scam. The same with the monthly magic box, all these things that, and a lot of you will ask, hey, what about this? What about that? What about this? What about that? And why don't I make a video on this or that? I mean, you're free to make as many videos on whatever you want as you can. Just make a YouTube channel, make some videos, and because supposedly you're telling me that this is gonna be a popular video, then you yourself would be a popular channel. I'm not going to promote something that I don't have an understanding of because our, so what I do is a vampiric tutor and I guess we skipped Jace too. I am cautious of two things. I don't trade very much anymore and I don't, I do speculate as a lot of you know, and I'm telling you not to speculate. So yeah, I know that sound it's interesting advice, right? What I'm not going to do is I'm not going to take some, so a lot of different brands, you would be surprised by how many, remember Puka Trade, they offered me a sponsorship before everyone else, before Tolarian, before Mana Source. I have the email proof and it's on this channel. And they offered it to me again. I said no again. I, it's not that I'm picky with sponsors. It's just that if I don't personally use what I would be promoting, then I'm not going to make a video about it. That's pretty much point blank. I'm not going to, so I have no interest in trading cards online. Uh, since Magic Online Trading League died, that was my main reason. That's my main hub of trading. I have never used Puker. I have never had a Puker account. Therefore, I mean, what I'm talking about is fact. It is fact that a hundred Puka points is not worth a dollar. That is fact. But the CEO, Eric, thinks it is and it will always be. So anyway, back to the tangent. I just don't trade online. I don't trade online. Uh, I just don't feel like I want to. Um, there's so many different issues for me where I live in Houston, which I'm pretty sure is the fourth largest city. So I'm surrounded by magic stores that will gladly buy my cards at decent prices. Not, it's not the highest I could get online, 
but the convenience is there for me to drive 45 minutes to Scarsdale and talk to Chris at Star Scarsdale, get up price and no shake hands and we're good. I mean, I know he's got to make money and he knows that I <laughs> am MTG line, so everything is fair. So for me personally, I would never use a card service that would give you online points or something like, because I that's not how I sell cards. I sell my cards at GPs or if I really am worried about certain card dropping, I'll email Chris and Chris will email me back the prices and how many he can take in and then we'll negotiate. And then when I see him, the large majority of the things, I'll bring him some bulk because he likes sorting is already negotiated. And that's how I sell cards. I sell them in person. I don't sell them on a trading platform of any type. So for me to make a video promoting a trading platform would be disingenuous because I do not use it, nor do I have any use for it. Now, that doesn't mean you cannot use it. I mean, that doesn't mean that you will not love it and think it's amazing, and that's great. So you should make a video saying how awesome the platform is. Well, why would you want me to make one when I don't use the platform? It's ridiculous, right? Like, <laughs> just because I have an audience, but I'm not going to tell my audience, hey guys, use this platform I don't use. Anyway, sneak attack is very, very cheap. A $20 sneak attack, that's not bad at all. I mean, these cards usually be $40 to $50. Eternal Witness, uh, Eternal Masters has made cards just so much more affordable and in my opinion, better for the players. This is a player's game. You might think that it's, what? why am I saying that I speculate and then I'm telling you not to speculate? Am I trying to trick you or anything? No, I speculate and I'm willing to take a loss. If you're not willing to take a loss, then don't speculate. It's like a casino. The house always wins. In this case, the house is the mothership, Wizards of the Coast. The house will always, always win because they can reprint these to the ground. If they want to reprint Chrome Mox in a standard set to move packs, they could. If they wanted to reprint something Chrome Mox as a mythic of mythics, and let's call it a masterpiece, they could. If they wanted to make a mythic of mythics of mythics, where it's one in every palette, they could. And they would call it priceless treasures, like in original Zendikar, where you can get Black Lotus. If they wanted to reprint Black Lotus, guess what? They can. So this whole the dichotomy of, hmm, I'm going to speculate, is when I play a gacha game, I don't know if you guys know, it's like Fire Emblem, and I don't expect to make money from Fire Emblem. I do not expect money to make money from Magic Duel. I do not expect to make money from Magic Arena. I'm doing it as a hobby. I'm My expectations to make money from speculation are because I've done it so long, actually kind of high, higher than most people, but it's still not like I'm doing it because my life depends on it. So when you talk about sponsorships and all these things, and I'm gonna go back to this point, $100 to make a video might seem like a lot of money and it might seem like, oh, it's just a five minute video, why don't you do it? I can't make a video of something that I personally don't use. No matter how awesome it is, right? I can't do it because, I mean, I just can't do it. Um, and that's, that's point blank what I have to say. And that's pretty much it. Natural order is at 15, 1448. That's insane for natural order. I love Natural Order a lot. I think it's a very great, good card. I love this artwork of Natural Order. So props and original Visions artwork. Um, and yeah, I mean, EDH is great. These cards, Eternal Masters, all of them are very good single 10 EDH cards as well. So they, they have offered a opportunity to buy them cheaply and no longer you have to pay 200, 250 for a Mana Crypt. Everyone can get a Mana, well, I mean, Mana Crypt is still expensive, but it's a lot easier to trade for a Mana Crypt now than it was in the previously, right? Way easier because there's just more copies of it. And maybe you get lucky. Maybe you buy a $10 boost pack and you get a Mana Crypt. Anyway, that is it. Bye, guys.